Millard was an earlier version of Donald Trump, an entrepreneur who seemed to have the Midas touch. He was a man in control of his life. He started as a youngster, making money with astonishing ease. When he was in law school in Alabama, he teamed up with a classmate and they dabbled in all kinds of business ventures. By the time they graduated, they were clearing $50,000 a year. By the time he was 29, Millard was a millionaire with all kinds of impressive properties. Together with his friend, they made a mission statement. It was simple and direct. To get rich. Millard made money fast. He worked all the time and soon gained all the possessions anyone might want. But all of this came at a high cost. As the business prospered, his health, integrity, and marriage suffered. As Millard continued to drift away from his childhood spiritual moorings, his efforts to succeed caused him to spend less and less time with his wife and two children. It was only after a matter of time until he became totally estranged from them. Then one day, his wife Linda left him, taking their two children, saying she felt like she doesn't have any husband at all. He's been working for money, as if trying to prove something. The separation provoked a crisis in Fuller's life, made him ask hard questions like, what was his life about? What was he living for? He had to set a goal to have a $10 million before he was 40. But when Linda left, he saw that his pursuit of success was a game that led nowhere. The crisis forced him to take a hard look at the priorities and value of his life, and he didn't like what his priorities and values had gotten him. As a result, Millard resurrendered his life to the leadership of Jesus Christ. He was then that his life began to dramatically turn around. He asked Linda for another chance at their marriage, and she consented. Then Millard remembered a man named Clarence Jordan, who had launched a project in rural Gorgia called Kainunaya Farm. He and Linda stayed there a month. Then during the next three years, the Fullers sold their possessions, gave their wealth to a variety of churches and charities, and sought for a mission of their own, something to do with a program to replace the shanties and dilapidated shacks in the nearby countryside, homes of people trapped in poverty. Millard established a corporation and raised money. With the money, he went to the people who lived in those shanties and offered to build them houses, new houses they could call their own. Fuller purchased the materials volunteers did the labor. The residents were required to work too, either in their own house or a neighbor's. No interest loans would be arranged. By 1972, 27 houses had been built. Then the Fullers took their dreams to Africa and over a hundred houses were built. Millard and Linda Fuller called their project Habitat for Humanity and that program has now played houses for the poor in several hundred American communities and more 19 nations around the world. Millard don't believe that we're saved by how many houses we put up, nor by how many poor people we feed. I know that we're saved by the blood of Jesus and the grace of God. But what is our response? That's what matters. Our response. We believe that Habitat for Humanity is one response, one manifestation of what God has done for us in Christ. Millard and his wife firmly believe that true religion has to have action. Their vision is to go into every country of the world and build homes. Quite a stretch for the man who formerly focused his entire life and energy on getting gain for himself and his family. Once he determined to redirect his priorities and values, there was no turning back. And the impact of Miller's decision to put Jesus Christ at the center of his life goes beyond measure. It is impossible to calculate the effect 
of one life appropriately focused on God.